Welcome to another episode of Pine Talk. My name is Justin, but you may know me as Porky of the Pine. I'm that guy that doesn't shut up about minimalist software, and I'm always tagging mods to report Spoom in the Pine64 chats. My name is Brian, also known by my handle of 33YN2. I'm a Pine64 community team member and a moderator. I get bugged a lot by Justin. Uh, I like Pine stuff, and uh, what's more to say? What's more to say is this is a big episode. This is a big month. Is it now? Yeah, it's, you saw that, that teaser. That, that thing was, it was like hand banana. Tonight, you. I didn't know what to think at first. Yeah, I don't, I don't know either. I wonder what it is. I think you know what it is. But before we get into that, we need to rapid fire some news. These are the little small bits of news that are important, but don't really have enough to them that we can have a full discussion on. So, let's get right into it. BigTorg has found the main issue that they were having with EG25 Manager that was causing all of the drops with the modem. So now the connection issues in the custom firmware should mostly be solved by this point and it actually might be viable to be using totally free firmware on your Pine phone. Manjaro has released Beta 16, which features partial MMS support, so you can now receive MMS messages, but sending them is still a little iffy. Nemo had a ton of progress in the past month. They had translation improvements. Now English, Russian, Czech, Polish, and Finnish are all available on the UI. There have been gesture improvements. Notifications, screen lock, and the general performance have all improved on Nemo. The resolution now matches the Pine phone. Before it wasn't 1440 by 720, but now it is. And now you can import contacts from a .vcf file, which has some issues, but in most cases it's working without a hitch. And, of course, there have been a ton of bug fixes. Milo, of SXMO fame, has begun development on a minimalist map program named Meepo. It is currently in alpha, but the first tagged release is scheduled to release shortly. The famed Pine64 community developer, Martin, has ported Octoprint to the Pine phone, allowing users to manage their 3D printers and view progress of their prints all using the built-in camera. And we are thrilled to announce that the Rock Pro 64 has been granted system-ready IR certification by ARM. This is huge news not only for the Rock Pro 64, but the entire range of RK3399 devices. And speaking of Rock Chip devices, we have a really big piece of exciting news this month. Pine64 just announced a really exciting product, the PinePhone Pro. This is a PinePhone with a RK3399 SoC, just like the PineBook Pro, However, it's designated the RK3399S SOC because it is voltage locked and has a 1.5 gigahertz clock speed out of the factory. This is for thermal and power reasons, and it's probably best that you don't try and overclock anything, such as the GPU, which is not locked. However, you can expect it to still be very, very performant. It's only going to be about 20% slower than the Pinebook Pro, but it will be a lot faster than the original A64 based Pine phone. And on that note, the original Pine Phone will not be going away. It will still be manufactured, and this is not a Pine Phone 2. This is just the Pine Phone Pro. Just like the Pine Book to Pine Book Pro, it's not a number two. It's, it's just a continuation of that line. There will still be a Pine Phone 2 in the future. Just right now, this is the pro product that is presented. But it will support the same OpenGL ES 3.1 APIs. It will have a Vulkan 1.0 support with Pan VK in the future. And you could potentially overclock it again, as I said, to 800 megahertz if you could figure out some solution for the thermals. It has four gigs of dedotated WAM, 128 gigs of eMMC storage. It can still boot from an SD card like the original PinePhone. However, it will rely on U-Boot to do so as the RK3399 is designed to boot from eMMC first, unlike the A64 in the PinePhone, which was designed to boot from the SD card first. So you'll rely on U-Boot on the MMC to point to the SD card to boot. Um, so if that breaks, you will have to use a uh, Rock Chips recovery tool in order to repair the device. However, it hopefully won't be a problem. Um, and either way, you'll have a recovery path if something does go wrong. It'll just be a, possibly a little bit of a pain to do it compared to the, uh, the current, I should say, Pine Phone. Um, as for the display, it has a 1440 by 720 IPS in-cell display with Gorilla Glass 4. It has a 13 megapixel rear Sony sensor, which is also covered by Gorilla Glass 4 to protect it and also give better image quality as the original plastics used in the current Pine phone uh, have a problem where it can cause some streaking in the image. 
and the glass covering the sensor in this Pine Phone Pro will not have that. It has the same five megapixel front camera, which is used in the, the rear of the current Pine Phone. It has Bluetooth 4.1, unfortunately. They didn't upgrade that. But the good news is it does have five gigahertz Wi-Fi. So it has Wi-Fi AC. It has, instead of USB 2.0 in the port, it has USB 3.0 with 15 watt quick charge and display out support as well, which means it will have much faster USB connectivity, which might be very useful for when you're docking it. There will also be full support for PinePhone back covers, such as the keyboard add-on. However, the PinePhone Pro will be two millimeters thicker than the original PinePhone. Wait, uh, while we're talking about the back covers, uh, we do have to address the elephant in the room. Guess what? The PinePhone keyboard has actually entered production and will be available next month for purchase. You can go ahead, I'm sorry. So this Pine Phone will be a huge step forward from the original. It still has the same modem. It still has a same resolution display, basically. It does have a lot more storage. It has a lot more RAM, a much faster SOC. It should be a great leap forward in every regard, except for like I said, the display and, and the fact that it has the same modem. But that's a good thing for the fact that you know it will be decent, it'll be solid, and the modem will be mostly reliable and you have an option of getting open firmware for it. So this Pine phone is not going to be the magic ticket to getting you to a daily driver status with a Linux phone. It does have the same modem, which means that you could use the open source firmware that's there and it has from the factory, obviously, the same firmware that comes with it. However, Plasma Mobile and Fosh and, and the other UI still that's have work to go in order to really make this a daily drivable device. MMS support, for example, Plasma Mobile still has some bugs that needs to be worked out, such as the suspend timer that's kind of bugged right now. And there's still some like cursor issues, for example, with selecting text in Plasma Mobile. But in the future, and even now, with the hardware improvements that are here, the extra storage, the faster USB, the faster SOC, all that good stuff combined means that you'll have a much smoother and faster experience that will bring you closer to daily driver status. And you'll still have the same great software support because it's really just carrying all over everything that happened. And it will still share that work too with the current Pine phone. That one's not going away again. It's it's going to be around. Pine64 will not stop manufacturing that until there's a Pine phone too. So that means that these two devices can share their software work. And the Pinebook Pro obviously will share a lot of its software work with the Pine phone Pro. So this will be a really, really good thing in the long run. You'll have a faster platform to play with. You'll have a, a lot better cameras. It will be sharing the same software, but don't expect it to just work. It, it's not a daily drivable phone for the masses yet. Pre-orders for the Explorer edition will become available in November and dispatch is expected in around January. That might be delayed a little bit because of the Chinese New Year till like February around there, but rest assured that early next year, you will be getting your PinePhone Pro delivered. You'll be able to order it next month. And developers will be able to order their devices this month using a coupon system um, that is outlined in the Pine64 blog. Only developers will be able to get their hands on that edition, however, because it's meant to bring up the software and get things worked out before users get their hands on it in January slash February. So with that out of the way, I suppose we can just go into the discussion about it now. Yeah, let's talk about this. This is huge. This is like being told that I don't know, Santa's coming tomorrow. Like, hell, it's oh, like being told me. Santa's coming today, just off, off the whim for the developers. Oh, trust me, this has been like Santa's coming tomorrow every day of the week after hearing about this device <laughs> yeah. and working on getting this out to, you know, the announcement and the blog and everything and this podcast. It's just super exciting. And the fact that this thing is going to be everything that the Pine Phone is plus more, it, it's exactly what people wanted. The Pine Phone was already a great device. It just lacked in the horsepower, like the GPU, for example, the MP2, uh, Mali MP2 GPU in it just doesn't have enough horsepower to really drive things smoothly in all cases, right? But this PinePhone Pro, this thing has a great GPU that really has a lot of potential. This device will really outcompete, you know, the PinePhone and other Linux phone devices, and it will be a great convergence device as well as a result. It's basically a PinePhone Pro in your pocket. Just imagine hooking it up to a keyboard add-on plugging into your monitor or even like, you know, do your work on there, go to the park, unplug it, you know, and you, you could use it as a little laptop right where you are. Same files and everything on there, same apps and programs and everything. It would just be awesome idea. Yeah. Uh, I daily drive my Pine phone, which I know everyone who's talked to me in the uh, Pine phone chat knows because I don't shut up about it. Um, and my biggest hangup is the actual performance. It's 
very sluggish a lot of times, even running SXMO, it can have a hard time doing a lot of things. It's miserable to try to run Firefox and especially try to use Discord on Firefox. It's It kills the battery life, which I don't know how much we mentioned the actual efficiency of this, but uh, the PinePhone Pro is expected to have a much better battery efficiency despite having the same battery. Um, and I'm just thrilled. <laughs> I can only... I don't know. The potential is insane. It's not going to be comparable to a flagship Android device or an iPhone, obviously, but it's still going to be the equivalent of like a low-end or a mid-tier phone from, what, 2017 or something like that, which I run a... I also have a OnePlus 6T. That's, that was kind of the mid-tier at that time, and... It works great, so I can only imagine just how snappy, how productive I could be with LaTeX on a PinePhone Pro. <laughs> I don't know. I I just I'm always amused by the fact that I have LaTeX on my phone. I mean, the uh, the great thing is it really is basically a 2017 device. I mean, I wouldn't say it's a flagship from 2017. I'm not really sure it's quite on par with those even, but. It has it kind of has mixed and match elements of different devices. It has a lot more storage than a lot of modern devices have, for example. It has the convergence ability that would be hands down the best if it, if the software works out, you know, and say Plasma Mobile, for example, simply because it runs a full Linux desktop stack. So it with a convergence UI, you know, so you could hook it up to a monitor and use it as an actual desktop or laptop machine unplug it and on the go you have the same power in your hands and that's something that androids just cannot compare to i know that they have the convergence features in a lot of phones like samsung decks for example and stuff that they did but it's just not the same that's the only one i can actually name yeah and and even then yeah it's it's still limited and um i know or one of my coworkers uses it and he He's basically used it to replace his desktop at home, which is nice, but he has definitely complained about how the user interface, just in general, like if he's trying to use like the Discord app on um, on Samsung Dex, it's still the Discord app. It's not like he actually has to go through Chrome and run Discord through Dex to actually get it to look like Discord on desktop. And he hates that. He's He's not really familiar with Discord as is. And the user interface on mobile, as you know, is terrible. So, something like the PinePhone Pro running essentially desktop Linux and having the performance to actually handle it decently. I mean, Discord's a bad example because there isn't an ARM-based Discord, but... Um, well, you could run it in the browser, though. Exactly. Yeah, you could run it in the browser, and it'll be not snappy. That, that might be a stretch, but it's it'll run great. Got an extra gigabyte of RAM compared to the Convergence Edition. Uh, four times the storage of the Convergence Edition. It's basically anything we or everything we could want. I, I actually personally think that this is going to have a huge impact in mobile Linux. Like, obviously, it's not daily driver ready. It won't be daily driver ready probably for at least another year. But we have just gotten considerably closer to a normal person who knows nothing about Linux being able to hold and use a Linux phone and not have any problem and it just replaced their android or i or iphone and i mean aside from that this thing will be it, it's just not only is it a huge step forward from the original pine phone but it does have some like i said it does have some interesting mix and match features from new phones so it's not a, like even if you're coming into this like let's say one day mainline linux phones are, are stable and ready for just any average normie to pick up and use right I, I don't think it will be um, too much of an, uh, a stretch for them to really not notice much of a difference between phones. Yeah, okay, new phones have like two two cameras on them and uh, they have extra sensors and they have like a 2K display, for example, or well, for the lower end ones, more like a 1080p one or whatever. But still, it will be fast, it'll be snappy. It will have a decent looking display. It's not probably gonna blow you out of the water, but it will work fine. Um, and actually, on the note of the display, it has a interesting... So it's an in-cell display, an IPS in-cell display, which means that it has the uh, the touch uh, receiver, like the display panel touch receiving uh, digitizer part 
inside the actual LCD itself. Um, so it's all packed together and it actually results in clearer images, like more vibrant texts and stuff like that. Now, I'm sure modern phones have that already, but it's just nice to see that compared to the old Pine phone. This, this is a big update and, and bringing it more in line with a modern device. Now, it would have been nice if it was an OLED, but you know, it, it is what it is. It's, it's still going to be a decent LCD. And you also see a lot of mainstream devices still shipping with normal IPS displays. It's not a horrible thing. OLEDs do have some trade-offs and obviously they are more expensive as well. So like the Steam Deck, for example, they went with an IPS display. I don't think if it's a good IPS display that it will be a bad thing. Um, and it will be much better one than the current Pine phone, for example, at least in theory with the glass and the incel technology. So here's hoping that it will look really great. You won't really have too many issues with it compared to a modern device. And top that off, the fact that this thing has a modern camera sensor means that it will finally be able to be taking images that are comparable to modern devices without too many issues. Because keep in mind, devices like the Google Pixel and stuff, they don't have like thousands of megapixels in them or anything like that. Like I know some phones will have like 45 megapixel sensors. What they do is they use software tricks to make the images yeah, they look have better. Really good software. Yeah, but if we can make an open source software stack, you know, Martin with Megapixels, uh, he's already really doing a lot of good work on that regard. And there's somebody that just released a script actually to add into Megapixels that would add image stacking and also AI upscaling. Now, yeah, it would take a while to process that on the Pine Phones hardware, but it, it if you let it sit for a while and do the processing, you can get really really good photos with that. And just imagine with the improvements over time in, in terms of that software, making it a little bit more efficient, if, if that's possible, and over time getting more powerful Pine Phone hardware. Because this is not the end, obviously. Pine 64 will continue pushing forward. And like maybe three or four years from now, we might see another Pine Phone Pro. I, I mean, I'm assuming here. I, I don't know the exact dates that they would expect. And also right now, you know, the world is in chaos. So it's not like you can expect something. Um, because, you know, three years from now, we still might be in the same boat where we're lacking chips and stuff. And it might be a pain for them to produce anything. But um, for example, like a Pine Phone 2 and, and stuff like that, we could more likely than not expect that to happen. And they would probably be the gap, you know, that we need to catch up to modern. Like I could expect maybe the next Pine Phone Pro having an OLED display, especially. Now, yeah, it might cost a little bit more, but it could have like an OLED display. It will obviously have a faster processor too. You know, like I could only imagine, you know, they put an RK3399 in here. What about an RK3588? In the next one, they worked with Rockchip to get this RK3399S um, going. You know, they took an RK3399 and they binned them. So they selected ones that were ideal. They voltage locked them so they can't go higher than the clock speed and use more voltage than, you know, would cause thermal problems, obviously, and battery life problems. And they made a really nice chip for this phone. So who's to say with a more efficient node on the RK3588 and Rockchip's help to voltage lock that and get that binned and everything that it couldn't be an even nicer phone going forward, you know? We'll, we'll be closer to modern devices. That would be an eight nanometer chip. It would have really powerful cores in it. It would have a great GPU. That would be a really nice future. But that said, that's that's really aside from the point, you know, Pine Phone Pro as it is now is a huge step up and I'll be more than happy to use that alone. And I wanna go back to uh, your mention of the average person using a phone. Um, the layperson isn't a nerd like us they don't care about the resolution or the display type like they don't see oled they see it looks good it looks pretty it the colors are nice this red looks like it's red that sort of thing and that that's not to insult anyone's intelligence it's just generally the pine phone pro as is Again, performance-wise, it's not going to compare to a brand new flagship phone, but the average person isn't going to be looking at, I mean, they're going to want fast, of course, but they're not going to be looking at display things. They just want good camera and it can run their apps well. So if we, once we get that software support to actually have amazing cameras or a decent camera, I should say, and we can actually support probably through Wagedroid, uh, most likely uh, most of the you know, online banking and apps like that, then I think we actually can see, I, I could foresee someone recommending Ubuntu Touch to someone who has, who just wants to get away from Android and iOS and 
they heard of the Pine Phone and they were interested, but they don't know anything about Linux. I could definitely see that happening. Although uh, the one thing that uh, I would like to point out is that it is a three hundred and ninety nine dollar device. So there's the Google Pixel, for example, that's more mainstream at that price. I I would say it's unlikely that an average person would want to buy the Pine Phone Pro because they'd be like, "What is this company? I've never heard of it." And you know, so it's a great device for enthusiasts and you know people that are into tech and stuff. And I'm sure it will sell really well for that reason alone. Once the software is in better shape, but as it stands, I can't like for a long time from now, can't really see the Pine Phone Pro being picked up in the mainstream too yeah, much. It, it will be viable, I'm sure, but you know, it, it just won't, won't be picked like, up in the mainstream. Be, uh, like, yeah, it definitely won't. Like, we're not gonna see yeah. you know Android iOS Pine. Like, it's it's gonna be um, a lot more subtle. Like, I think it'll be people who like because I know we've had people come into the Pine Phone chats before saying, I don't know anything about Linux. I heard about this phone. And I just really hate Google. I really hate Android and iOS. I don't want them spying on me and all that. They're just, you know, concerned about privacy. And they're like, I heard this is a really good privacy phone. Like, is this a good idea to buy? And everyone's like, if you don't know anything about Linux and you're not like a tinkerer or anything, this is not a phone you should buy. And I, I always joke with my friends and everyone that, um, that they should get a Pine phone and stuff. But like after a while, I'm like, okay, realistically, I don't think you should get a Pine phone because you'd have a terrible time with this. Um, but I think with a Pine Phone Pro, we're we're getting there. We're not there. Yeah, we won't be there for a, for a good while still. But we are definitely getting there. Maybe another like year or two, probably more like two years from now. We'll and we'll, we already have the hardware. You know, then from there we just need the software to really get polished up. And it's it's already really close. It just needs some bug fixes. Needs some improvements, like say GPS for example, needs some improvements on accuracy, which can be done. It just requires people to wire in the compass data, for example, from the sensors. And, you know, then we'll be set to go. We'll have a really solid experience. Now, yeah, WayDroid will be a different can of worms. I'm sure that will take longer to sort out. But uh, if you're just doing, like, calls and texts and MMS and, you know, web browsing and maybe some office work and stuff, like, for example, I, you could probably run some kind of Node app or something into the you know, I actually, as a matter of fact, you can run note apps and stuff like that on the Pine phone, but then hooking into a monitor, you can do like Excel and stuff like that. So that would be pretty useful, I would assume, for people. And so either Excel or a, a, the minimalist equivalent, I forget which one it is, but yeah. there's one that uses them keys. But I mean, there's already lots of good software that works great in that regard. So if we just get the bugs sorted out and maybe some of the remaining issues like the compass data and GPS, for example, to make it a little more accurate, then we'll be set to go. This will be a really nice phone. Now, yeah, it's not going to have as good a battery life as a modern phone with like three nanometers of, of a node on the CPU and or the SOC, right? And it, it like, which has like ultra low power, like quad core uh, clusters. So it has like Eight, eight cores in it and that can really kick in horsepower but then use really low power it's not going to be that but for people that want to get freedom of their you know privacy and their that they want to have a little bit more like freedom to customize and control their phone and do what they want and also the 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 like the thought that they can use it as a convergent device you know it could be a little mini like chromebook in your hand if you wanted it to um yeah, or you it, could it literally will be a <laughs> mini chromebook it will be and and if you don't want that, I mean, you don't need to really care about that. You can just use it as a phone if you wanted to. But there's a lot of value here in different aspects. And the camera is pretty decent. It's not the best thing in the world. But with some software tr uh, trickery, just like Google does with their phones, you know, which I'm sure will come over time, we can really start to see some really nice results out of this hardware. And I'm sure over time, like I said, Pine 64 will march on with new devices. It will take, it, it's not going to come right away, mind you. This just came out. And, you know, they're, it, right now things are in a mess in the global economy and stuff. So it's not, they're definitely not going to have like tomorrow, a new phone. Keep that in mind. This is going to be what we got for a little while, you know, but it's a great little upgrade for people that want it. And then on the low end, if you don't want to upgrade, like if you just want to do calls and like basics, like the, the pine phone that we have now can do, you can go and buy that and do that. Pine 64 is not getting rid of that. And then if you want to pay a little bit more to get some good oomph behind it and more feature set, go to the pine phone pro. Yeah. A good uh, example that I remember um, that I can actually apply now. But a good example was very early on, I remember hearing that the Pine phone is essentially a Raspberry Pi with, with um, calling features or like with phone features. So it was it's more of an experimental device. You want to tinker and you want to have a ARM-based Linux phone, then that's it's the best thing you could buy. And it's also cheap, you know, $150 for the, the base 2 gigabyte Pine phone. And that's 
great that we're going to be able to <laughs> that we're still having that uh, and that's still going to be something sold because if you just want something to tinker with you don't necessarily want a phone then that's perfectly acceptable it's just or it's perfectly fine to use and you can get by with the two gigabyte uh with two gigabyte pine phone but now for people who want a phone the pine phone pro is now or yeah the pine phone pro is now available or will be available i guess it's available for developers only but um having a pine phone pro will be good for uh the people like me who are just really adamant on running a linux phone and being that guy <laughs> and um it'll actually work and it'll work great well let's hope it does work great i mean still the hardware should work great but the software that's you know gonna need some work to be yeah we'll there. get there <laughs> but on the on the other hand though I, I will say this it might be a more expensive pine phone but don't don't think that it's not for tinkering either it's still gonna have pogo pins and kill yeah. switches and stuff just like the old one or the current one i should say because that one's not going away either it's going to be sold alongside this one and it will be the lower end model obviously but it will still be there but you could still do tinkering with the pine phone pro if you wanted to it has the pogo pins it, it runs the same software it, it does mainline linux just because you know the pine book pro does mainline linux it has the same soc just modified a little bit by rock chip right um so it, it will be a full tinkerer's paradise in your hand but also a phone you know it would work great as a phone and also a little computer a chromebook so it'll be exciting yeah it's this is going to be very exciting and i'm going to do my best to buy one as soon as i possibly can as soon as like day one that they're available for end users you I'm kidding me the that. keyboard and the pine phone pro they're already sold for me i'm i'm money's yeah. down on the table it's mine yeah, yeah i was on the fence with the keyboard because i was like uh because i'm actually just using my pine phone like the keyboard kind of kills the the phone usage of it but it's like pine phone now pro? you have a laptop yeah, yeah. Now, now you have a laptop in your pocket why not you know yeah or, or i can keep the i could put the keyboard on my pine phone and have that for if i ever need like a spare laptop which i have been or i want the pine note to replace my uh my thinkpad because just lugging around a thinkpad is less than ideal and or you know <laughs> um and if I can just replace it, I mean, the performance is, is going to be a huge performance hit, but to just use my regular Pine phone for having a mini keyboard and then and using it for presentations, I've done a LaTeX presentation, or I've, I've done a presentation using a LaTeX Beamer uh, presentation, or Beamer document, I guess, um, using my Pine phone. I, can, I converged, I used the, the Converges dock, I connected it to a TV, and I gave a full-on presentation uh, with a um, little handheld keyboard to actually uh, change the slides and everything and it worked great so i could still do that with a pine phone with a keyboard it's just you know an extra what 60 dollars that i'm gonna have to drop well, you see i see the pine phone keyboard as kind of a you know okay sure it's not going to be like you're going to be holding the pine phone to your head anymore when you have that on because it's it's going to be bulky and a bit weird to hold it up and the microphone for example is not going to be like directly under your mouth anymore right but if you use a headset, like a Bluetooth wireless headset, then you could do that just fine. Ooh, you know, I, I got a yeah. pair of Aeropex uh, Aftershocks Bluetooth headphones, which are bone conducting headphones. So my ears are always open to sound. So I can hear everything around me. I can drive and listen to music still, for example. But also I could pair it up to my Pine phone and do calls and stuff and, and just, you know, it would be just fine. It would have noise canceling microphones inside the headphones and everything. So it should be set to go. And then um, I would have the keyboard add-on for like texting and stuff. Like if I needed to do a text real quick, I hate the virtual keyboard on phones. It's just so annoying for me to peck at the things. There's no feedback to them, right? I'm hoping the Pine Phone keyboard will yeah. change that. Like I'll actually enjoy using it. And the, the, I mean, it will be small keys, but they'll be tactile ones that move and have the travel to them. And on top of that, you have the 6,000 milliamp hour battery inside the keyboard, which means it will charge up your Pine Phone and keep it going all day. And take the Pine Phone Pro and add that to the equation, and you got yourself a phone that will last a long time on a battery charge. And I think that will be yeah. awesome. The I, I didn't mention the <laughs> the power. I mean, we have we've mentioned it multiple times at this point. The power of having that that keyboard on a Pine Phone Pro. It's it's a literally a portable laptop. There are probably Chromebooks out there that are considerably weaker than the Pine Phone Pro. Oh yeah, there and, definitely is. I mean, yeah, just the and the fact that I mean, Chrome OS just doesn't work anyway. 
Well, I mean, okay, so Chrome OS is fine on its own, I guess, for average, you know, web browsing and stuff. But let's put that aside. So some Chromebooks, I'm okay. So I'm not sure about nowadays Chromebooks. I haven't really looked into the market, but at least like as of like maybe a year and a half ago, for example, there were some Chromebooks on this on sale that were pretty weak. Like they had like a really low clock speed, and they only had like four A53 cores, for example. They just weren't fast, right? But this thing has four A53 cores plus two A72 cores, plus a decent GPU that's clocked less than the Pinebook Pro, but still at a reasonable clock speed. So it should be really snappy. And, and well, it is actually snappy. It's already been shown in Martin's uh, demo video of the Pine phone, actually. But yeah, it, it is really snappy. It's it's smooth. It's fast, at least for phone. And, but I'm sure it will be super snappy for even just web browsing and stuff on a monitor. I mean, the Pinebook Pro is pretty fast as on its own. Let's actually talk about the GPU, because I, I forgot that I wanted to actually mention this. This thing can handle 3D gaming. Oh, yeah. It can do uh, Super Tux Cart. It could do, um, like, Doom, for example. I mean, the old Pine Phone could, too, but this thing could actually manage, uh, like, Doom 2, for example. Well, I'd... It can allegedly handle Dreamcast emulation. Yeah, it can do Dreamcast em- <laughs> emulation. But so, all right, so it could probably do, like, a newer doom like not the newest ones i'm not talking about that at all but like a 19 From something like like a 2000s yeah not, not doom 3 uh i'm thinking like uh, isn't there a doom 2 something like that um there's like an open source doom project that is a really old doom that's been open sourced and that uh has been shown yeah. to run on the uh redaxa uh zero board and that has a weaker soc in in overall i would say compared to the rk 3399s so now that we have the RK3399S and the Pine Phone, I'm sure that could actually drive that game and, and do decently. I'm not going to say it's going to run amazingly or anything, but should be playable. And that, that would actually be pretty interesting. The idea that you can run old games like that, like Morrowind and stuff like that, and do it at a reasonable frame rate, possibly. I'm definitely going to be putting RuneScape to the test, of course. I mean, I already have RuneScape on my Pine Phone, uh, and I get about 8 FPS on average. So oh, yeah. hopefully I can hit that 50 cap i'm sure you will um, on the you know um, the internal revolution i think that won't be a problem and, and and the big problem is uh the lack of gpu acceleration that's the reason why uh, um the yeah that's the reason why i'm getting only 8, 8 fps because i don't have any gpu acceleration if i can get that which it has support for OpenGL, it's it, it's going to be amazing i can try even to what is it rune light hd now where you can uh oh, actually yeah. play well this has um, newer with hd graphics and yeah. Well, this has newer OpenGL support, so this that shouldn't be a problem at all. I mean, you should be able to run RuneScape and Blender even now. I mean, I know people hacked Blender to run on the original Pine Phone, but it had to be an older version to get it running or a patched version. But now it's it's probably going to be likely that you could just get normal Blender running because it, it supports OpenGL 3.1 ES, and also it supports as well Vulkan 1.0 if you use Pan VK, which, mind you, is in a really, really early stage, so I'm not sure how well that will work, but in the future that could actually run hopefully pretty well, you know, and then we could do a lot more with that. What I'm actually interested to see is I have a kind of old, uh, netbook at this point. Um, I don't know if it's, yeah, I think it is a netbook. Um, it's from 2015 and had two gigabytes of Ram, 32 gigabytes of EMMC storage. And I want to see how that compares to the Pine Phone Pro, which I, I'm guessing, like, I know I could play Stardew Valley on it and I could actually play it pretty well. I could play Endless Sky. I was really good with, uh, or it was, it was good for 2D games. Yeah, and I think the, you know, the Pine Phone Pro will run those kind of games great. I'm actually yeah. thinking that would be a lot of fun to play, you know, Stardew Valley and maybe um, Stardew Valley and maybe uh, FTL and stuff like that on there. That, you know, small 2D indie games like that, that would be a lot of fun. And they'd probably run really, really well on the Pine Phone Pro's hardware um, just because the extra GPU oomph behind it alone. I mean, let alone the CPU power that's there. So with the Pine Phone Pro out of the way, since we've talked a lot about that, and I mean, I'm sure we'll have more information in the future about it. But for now, uh, we have a few remaining bits of news. The the blog post does cover a few more things. Um, it is definitely mostly the Pine Phone Pro. Uh, but uh, Infinitime did release not just version 1.5.0 in this past month, but two days later, they released version 1.6.0. And that's because they found the issue that was causing the uh, Bluetooth to constantly disconnect. And so as soon as they found that, they patched it out. And I still have problems with Bluetooth connections, but that's because I'm on SXMO and it's not running in the background and it's a whole thing. 
But the, the other big thing with the version 1.5.0, not only does the time persist through a reboot now, but also there is an alarm app, which I can say I have been using every single day since I updated to 1.5.0. As soon as I heard that there was an alarm app, I I still use my Android phone as a backup because I'm so mildly concerned about Pine Phone alarms, which I think everyone is at this point. Um, but so far it has actually woken me up every single time, and I think it's been maybe a minute or two early for a good reason. It's actually probably closer to like 10 seconds early. And the, the buzzing is nice, and it just it's a very light waking up experience. And then the last news we have is on the Pine Note. The initial production run has rolled off the factory floor, and developer pre-orders should be going live today. But that's all I have. Uh, Brian, do you have anything else? Nope. All right. Well, I think this wraps up this episode. Let us know how you thought this episode went compared to the last one. We are definitely trying a lot of different things. And being in it, I liked it a lot more, but it's, you know, it's up to you. You guys really control what we do. But if that's all that we have, till next time.